production begins in 5, 4, 3, 2, Welcome to Community Foundation Spotlight. I'm Erica Joseph with the Community Foundation, and we appreciate you joining us to learn about some of the good works and wonderful programs serving our community. We're really pleased today to have Beth Olson with the Recovery Resource Center. Hi, Erica. Thanks thank, for having me. Thank you for being here. You're currently the Executive Director, and you've been in that post for quite some time now. Mm, three years. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's quite some time or not. Well, it seems like a long time because you have done so much in <laughs> the time you. that you've been there. Thank you. So for viewers, hopefully people have heard of Recovery Resource Center, but it's very possible that they heard of your previous name. Yes. And who were you before you became Recovery Resource we Center? We were the SAC Center, the Salisbury Substance Abuse Community Center. And we changed our name a little over a year ago for a couple of reasons. One was people kept thinking we were a treatment center and they would call and say I need to sign up for treatment and we would say no 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 we're not treatment and the other thing was the community center label led people to believe it was a place where people could go for the day and we're not set up for that so we decided and we also wanted a much more positive name you want to go to a substance abuse center or you want to go to a recovery center so all things together, we changed our name about a year ago. And so you have many of the same core fundamental um, you know, mission and services there, but I know that you have branched out quite a bit to really focus on that positive um, recovery and to help people with what becomes a lifelong commitment. Mm -hmm. You mentioned that you weren't a treatment center and Tell me how you're different at the Recovery Resource Center. Okay, treatment is an event. It has a beginning, your intake, a middle, and an end. Recovery is a lifestyle. Um, and people really get tripped up when they leave treatment. Not everybody, but a lot of people go, okay, I'm well, I'm cured, I never have to worry about this again and they find themselves in a position where they relapse, which is very sad. Recovery really is a lifelong commitment to live without alcohol and drugs. So what happens, we have all those same values we had before, and we have 40, I think it's 43 12-step meetings right now, every week, and that's where you learn how to live without drugs and alcohol. You know, when you're in treatment, nobody talks about what you do when you're at a wedding sober for the first time and they toast the bride and champagne is flowing and oh what do I do here you know right that kind of thing what do I do if I go to a party and everybody's drinking and I'm really uncomfortable but I love the host and hostess and I don't want to be obnoxious and how do I what do I do you well, know. it creates that, you know, one of the things that I, I have, when, when you come through the doors at the Recovery Resource Center, you immediately feel like it's a warm and welcoming place. Thank you. We worked hard at that. And I know you have <laughs> been working hard at that, and that's yeah. some of the changes that you've done over the past few years to still have the space but make it feel like a good space, the kind of space that people would want to come to, like their house or like a friend's house. Yeah. And... You also feel that it doesn't matter who you are when you walk in there. Nobody has names or labels or titles. And that's one of the core things about your work through 12 Steps and at Recovery Resource Center that I think is so important. Can you talk a little bit about that anonymity? Yes. Yeah. First thing I want to say is the most important thing we do, absolutely the most important thing we do, is make people feel welcome when they come in. Period. If we can't do that, nothing else matters. It just doesn't. Um, the principle of anonymity is part of the 12-step literature, tradition, culture. And, it, um, and so what you do is you make a commitment to not share identifying information outside of meetings. So I might say, a woman in a meeting said, blah, 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 or a man in the meeting shared about, but I would never say, Erica Joseph said such and such in a meeting. That's just not okay. Mm -hmm. um, people are people. 
not everybody is good at adhering to that, but that's the principle, and we really honor that. You know, if there's a phone call, is Erica Joseph there? I'm sorry, I can't tell you if I know Erica Joseph. Right. And I you think know. that's important to help because when you want people to feel that they have a new center of connection. Mm -hmm. um, so often in experience that I've seen with friends or family that have gone into recovery, they lose their entire social network often because often those, those people are some of the challenges that they were having staying mm -hmm. sober in the first place. Mm -hmm. And so as an effort toward that, and I think, you know, having that peer group to help provide the kind of support that you're talking about, what do I do if I'm at, you know, a wedding and there's alcohol, or what do I do? How, how do you cope in those situations? Those experiences really can't be shared by anybody else other than somebody who's in recovery. No. No, they can't. You know, coming up, what am I going to do on Thanksgiving when I'm with my family? You know, how do I handle that? Yeah, that's a big deal. Um, but going back to the anonymity just for just a second, there are a couple of reasons besides protecting people, you know, um, and the protection is important because as smart as we think we are, there's still a stigma attached to um, addiction, and the people in recovery bear the brunt of that because they've identified themselves. So you're the identified problem. Um, but the other thing is it protects the fellowship. So if I get sober and I go out on my white charger and I'm going to save the world and I'm sober, yay me, I did it this way, and then I relapse, then the people I've talked to can say, oh, okay, that doesn't work. So it not only protects the individual, it protects the fellowship, right. which is really important too. And you mentioned stigma, and I now in, know that in community conversations, we're, we're talking so much in the media about opioids. Um, that is but one piece of the work that you do. But since it is top of mind for so many people, can you share what um, is happening within the doors and within the programs of Recovery Resource Center specifically around opioids? Opioids. The face of addiction is getting younger, richer. Um, and not so many people of color. You know, it, it really has hit the white middle class. And I think that's part of why it has so much attention. These people are going, my God, I gave my kid everything. And, and what happened? What did I do wrong? So we see that the face of recovery is getting, getting younger. And these kids have no life skills. Mm -hmm. You know, they just don't. Um, and so that's one of the reasons why we've branched out to add things to our offerings to help kind of fill that hole, you know. And I know that you have added some um, new sort of networking and outreach opportunities so that because of that changing face, you know, and providing new ways for people to engage with the center, um, you, I know that you had some Halloween activities, for example, and um, with holidays coming up and, and in, you know, there's always something throughout the year that tests people with their recovery and their sobriety. So what are some examples of, of what people might not think is going on over at the RRC? Well, Halloween weekend, which is the first big party weekend of the season, we had a marathon and we had meetings going every 90 minutes from 5 o'clock Friday until noon on Sunday. We did not go overnight, but until midnight. Right. We had a dance. It was well attended. People had a great time. They were safe. They were sober. You know, and we had food and fellowship in one room and meetings going in one or two rooms all weekend, and then we cleared everything out and had a dance Saturday night. It was really wonderful. So um, it's not just the meeting. So if people no. are familiar with 12-step meetings, they're certainly there, but there are other things to provide that fellowship opportunity. Yeah, on Thanksgiving... We're doing food, fellowship, and football from 10 to 8. And there will be um, an NA speaker, a Narcotics Anonymous speaker, and an AA speaker starting at 10. There will be food at noon and football. They're bringing in a big screen TV and, and going to give people 
a safe place to celebrate Halloween, and not Halloween, Thanksgiving. All the things that we would typically do, food and family and friends and football, but just in, in a, a safe sober in a sober environment. You know, and some of these people too, their families are really done with them. You know, they've been hurt enough, they've been lied to enough. So in order to feel a part of something, of part of a community, you know, we provide that event. And we're, we're really excited to be adding these events that cross fellowships. Yeah, and, and that's what I wanna highlight now because when we last visited um, from the Community Foundation, you invited us in to see all the things that, have, that are going on within, within um, RRC. Uh, I think it was one of our friends at United Way that highlighted all of the different programs and all of the different networks that you have in place there. So can you share, I won't ask you, I won't quiz you for every single one in case you forget <laughs> one, but just to, just to help people understand, it's not just alcohol, it's not just opioids and narcotics. There are other things that you're helping to, to, to reach out to in the community. Yeah, first of all, in the 12-step fellowship world, we have Gamblers Anonymous and we have Eating Disorders Anonymous, which is Overeaters Anonymous, kind of the same thing. We also have Al-Anon and nar -Anon for the family and friends of the alcoholic and addict. That's the 12-step piece. Um, we have added um, parenting classes. We have a partnership with the Wicomico County Local Management Board, and they bring in a six-week parenting class. It starts Tuesday. We have partnered with the health department, and we have a volunteer from PRMC, and we do Narcan with CPR trainings. It's not a certification course, but our volunteer brings in the dummies so you get to practice just in case, just in case. Um, we have a stress management workshop that's coming up this Saturday. We have um, Planned Parenthood is coming in and doing a workshop on healthy relationships in January, and they'll be back in February doing a workshop on consent and boundaries. Really important, really important. Um, we have contacted PNC Bank about having financial literacy. We are working with the Ammon Foundation and their sole purpose is to support people in recovery and they brought in a workshop, a wonderful workshop on education and why you should invest in yourself if you really want to build this new life. And then they had they done all the research on the local um, colleges, community colleges, they had all of that information for our people and it was wonderful. To help and, provide that, there are opportunities available. You're yeah. rebuilding life Yeah. in, in many yeah. cases. Yeah, and, and we often reach out to drug court and to the halfway houses and say, hey, we've got this coming up, do you want to send your people? Um, and we've had a really wonderful relationship with them as well. Good. So it's really, it's growing. Now, I know you mentioned things that are coming up in the near future, but, you know, PAC-14, they may be running this farther into the future, <laughs> which is wonderful. Yeah. What's the best way for people to see what is happening now, whenever they're watching, okay. um, for Recovery Resource Center? Um, they can hit Facebook. We have a Facebook page. They, we have a website, which is rrcsby.org. Um, we now have some social media gurus that make sure all of that's up to date, which is wonderful. Yes, it is. It's wonderful. Um, we have a Twitter account. I don't know what the handle is. I'm old. I'm sorry. <laughs> I bet you if somebody's watching and they're on Twitter, they will find your Recovery Resource Center. Okay. And, um, but the best two ways are the website and the Facebook page. Facebook page is always up to date, even if nothing else is. Well, one of my favorite things about Recovery Resource Center and your focus there is that you have really distilled down um, when you communicate in the communities in particular, the core mission of your efforts, and that's in your tagline. Could you share that with us? Well, our official mission statement is supporting people on the journey of recovery. And the tagline is, there's help, there's hope, and it's free. Everything we do is free. We are able to do that because we have such good partnerships in the community and such wonderful financial support from you, from United Way, and from some of the large corporations and foundations in town. You know, we're, we're really truly blessed to have the financial support that we do because we don't get any taxpayer dollars. 
And certainly always an opportunity for viewers who might feel compelled or passionate about this cause to make additional financial contributions or volunteer because as a nonprofit organization, you have the same types of needs of, uh, as any other nonprofit. Mm -hmm. You just have the mission of helping people through the, the journey of recovery. Yes. Good. Yes, and we love, we love our volunteers. We have a fabulous board of directors, really engaged, really helpful. They're well, wonderful. Be before we close up today, and I know many of the members of your board, and, and they were recently recognized at your, at your event, um, so we can't say enough about the leadership that comes in a volunteer capacity to so mm -hmm. many organizations. Um, are there any highlights for RRC that I did not hit on, um, so in our last couple of moments, or something that you want to share with viewers as a takeaway? It makes my day when someone stops into my office and says, I haven't seen you for a while, but I want you to know I'm still sober. And that's why we do what we do. And thank you for doing that. My pleasure. That's why they do what they do at the Recovery Resource Center right here in Salisbury, Maryland. Visit their website, visit their Facebook page, and learn more about how you can help someone you know who's on the journey of recovery or support the Recovery Resource Center. You've been watching Community Foundation Spotlight on PAC 14. We'll see you next time.